I was super hungry for information there for about, I don't know, about 40 days anyway, where the social media landscape, as well as the greater uh, internet had dried up with highly on uh, information. I enjoy reading about progress on the company. And so for the last 45 days, it's been just about as close to speculation as we could possibly get. But I did come out with my highly on video on Sunday, kind of summarizing where I thought we were with the stock price. It was well received by the grander investment community. I think the difference between retail investors who hold the bag on this is that it's our hard earned dollars that are being put to work, whereas large institutions, it must be nice to be able to invest millions and millions of dollars in a company and then just wait it out, right? I, they don't even monitor uh, their holdings in these companies that they take positions in. But um, it must be nice because ultimately they'll be the ones that went out and they always are. Uh, it's usually retail investors that uh, cannot handle the swings in stock market investing, I've seen this a hundred times over, and I know there's part of the subscriber base out there as well uh, that are lockstep in this uh, um, realization with me, and uh, they won't let this one get away. And I, I think you can control the level of emotion that uh, is settling in here with the recent downgrade. I found uh, interesting, interesting enough. I don't know if we garner the attention on social media enough to have uh, a major analyst with UBS come out and, and contradict what uh, what I put out on Sunday. But these do garner a lot of attention. And I would venture to guess that there's probably, oh, I don't know, a few hundred thousand shares that are probably represented by this and uh, the greater uh, retail investing community that do hold shares in Hylion, I, I would say that that share count is probably up closer to about a million within our uh, close community. And uh, I think when we do put out content like that to, uh, to really foot stomp the reason why we hold this company as loyal as we do, uh, it's, um, it makes us more powerful. And just 15 years, 20 years ago, I've been investing my entire life. We never had the opportunity to do this. We never had the opportunity to come in and get real-time information on, um, on companies, real-time, no, no doubt. Like th This would have taken a week for me to get uh, via the local newspaper when I was a small boy, 15, 16 years old, um, getting introduced to the stock market, reading through the stock ticker page of the News Review, which was my local newspaper, it got delivered once a, once a month or once a week out in the country. Uh, and I was I always take the financial page out and look for the stock ticker symbols. That that flow of information has improved steadily over time, has it not, folks? I think that um, flow of information can also be a double edged sword. Uh, a double-edged so sword insofar as I, I think it's unfortunately an environment for uh, levels of manipulation. I find it ir uh, interesting. Uh, the analyst who I would rate um, no higher than a Walmart greeter, to be honest with you, um, whose success ratio is extremely dismal, I, I would say that you could probably take that degree that he earned um, Mr. Stephen Fisher or Mark Fisher, whatever the hell his name is. I think it's Stephen Fisher, who um, has a resume that is um, extremely disappointing. I, I thought, you know, if this was from a credible source, um, then I, I would think that there would be somewhat of a merit there behind it. And I will counter punch for punch uh, what uh, the analyst with UBS noted uh, which is what I really wanted to get a hold of was the the crux of the argument from uh, Mr. Fisher here on his um, huge downgrade, uh, well timed, I might add here, uh, right going into the silent period into um, the Q3 earnings that are right around the corner for Hylion. So, uh, good job, Mr. Fisher. It sounds it seems as if to me that UBS is using you as a pawn. So congratulations in uh, being used and abused like a whore uh, 
to put out a, a hit job on a company that by nature of your deep dive and due diligence uh, won't make sales through 2024 uh, as per the sales recommendations on their investor presentation. Th that is uh, pretty imaginative. And, and here's why. Uh, Hylion already has 1,550 orders on the books for the ERX Hypertruck. Now, Mr. Fisher uh, so elegantly timed his downgrade, which was just a vicious downgrade, uh, putting it from where it was trading before the downgrade at about $7.13 down to a whopping $5. So based on Mr. Fisher's success ratio, uh, in the past of being wrong more than 50% of the time, uh, I don't think that this will be any different. Now, the market reacted as if Mr. Fisher uh, was sitting on his throne uh, with a big crown around his head and was the all-knowing stock analyst, and the market reacted as if uh, his success ratio was 100%. Uh, in other words, the stock fell 12% in one day. Uh, based off of the analyst uh, downgrade of the stock. What's ironic about this, and I want you all to think about this point, is that UBS currently owns 17,000 shares of the company, 17,000, okay? So their position is actually fairly close to mine, actually, and I'm just a little feller. I'm just a little feller retail investor, right, that puts his dollars together, trades in and out of stock swing trades. I do value investing. I do dividend growth investing and I do passive investing, which is absolutely my favorite craft because why? Um, because that's the way that's really going to get me to uh, a substantial amount of wealth for not for me, but for the family down the line. But for those that have the power to enter into a little bit of a speculative position, I do concede that there's probably a lot of people that own this stock and th it's a little much for them. It's a little bit much. What I find really interesting is that Hylion gets this kind of attention, which by nature of Mr. Fisher's uh, in-depth uh, presumption and telling the future that they won't make sales, which again, I, I, I just told you about the sales that they already have on the books for the Hypertruck ERX, right? They're not going to make sales, okay? And everybody forgets the fact that there's already orders on the books, okay? That they cannot fulfill until the product validation is complete on the ERX. Pretty convenient position to be in, don't you think? Right? It's what we would consider a catch-22. So nice timing on that, Mr. Fisher. I'm not really sure if that was an insight that you had just pop into your brain that you thought that this was the greatest um, stock recommendation of your career, or it was probably more realistically a phone call that you got from the hand that feeds you uh, asking you to do a hit job on the company. So great job on that. Very well timed. And you got what you wanted. I mean, you got the parent company, the um, hand that feeds you. Uh, a 10 to 12% discount on the stock today. So job well done just speaks to the double-edged sword and the information that's put out through social media being that very arm of manipulation that can be put through on social media now. Um, the SEC don't rely on them because they spend most of their time asleep at the wheel. Uh, so congratulations on that as well as we can um, just allow companies to run rampant uh, and use analysts, subpar analysts as hit job uh, on companies that are vulnerable in the marketplace uh, to, to be put out there and to provide that opportunity for the parent company to buy stock. Now, is UBS gonna buy more shares? I don't know. I'll be closely monitoring the landscape and I would expect that you'll do the same Again, it's not as if they're just free and clear in this. They do own 17,000 shares of the company, which is a fairly small position for a large institution. But look at what's been happening over the last few months of large institutions really increasing their position. Bank of America, BlackRock, just to name a few, State Street, 
three major institutions. And do you think that UVS wants to be left outside in the cold, shivering like a whipped dog uh, on the side with their small anemic position of 17,000 shares? I think not. So all is fair in love and war. Employ uh, an analyst, a less than uh, really a disposable hero, to be honest with you. Absolutely a, a disposable arm of the company that can put out a hit job on the company. And this, in fact, is my response. I digress. Uh, the EX1 is out and ready, ready to go. I, I think if there was a fundamental reason to um, have some bearish case on Hylion right now, and again, all of these bearish theses come at a time that is conveniently done on a company that is going through product validation right now. It's that simple. Okay. Could they provide more granular uh, information? Yes. I think Hylion is 100% guilty on this front. Um, I I'm tired of barking up their tree. So what I'm going to end up doing is using the independent investor channel as an arm to tell the story the way that I want it to be told, because uh, I, don't, I don't have an agenda. I, I, don't, I don't have a hand that feeds me. I feed myself. And that's what the common thread amongst all retail community have in the hundred shares that they own or the thousand shares that they own, 500 shares. Each one of these shares represent a piece of a company that we would expect by nature of the information that it was, was disclosed to shareholders in the SEC filings, in the investor slide decks, um, that there's some merit there, okay? And I find it interesting that all that merit just gets thrown out the window on one day of trading and all of the focus gets put on an analyst who by nature of the consensus of said downgrade was that Hylion was not going to make sales through 2024. Very interesting enough. Let's take Detmar Logistics, 300 ERX orders, as well as a customer for the hybrid product fits like a glove. In that business, Stepmar is a privately traded company. Interesting enough, a small business that has taken on this huge leap with Hylion and believes in the product that much. Do you honestly think that by nature of the risk reward profile for Detmar, that a company like Anheuser-Busch couldn't step in right now and place a five or 10 order hyper truck order uh, through the Innovation Council? These are the types of things that could happen anytime. But again, it's a position of convenience where we are going through product validation and they really just don't, they're not at that time right now where large companies are going to start placing orders for a technology that's going through its paces. Okay. ANG, this is an interesting one. ANG is the strategic network that provides the fueling stations across the US and North America, Canada, uh, and the like to provide the uh, natural gas to these said truckers on their anticipated routes. There are fuel credits that are being provided as specific customers, and it is absolutely in ANG's best interest to go ahead and place this 250 hyper truck order again. Wait. Mr. Fisher says that they're not making sales into 2024. I'm confused. Anyway, I, I proceed on. My retort to Mr. Fisher is such that ANG already has 250 orders of the Hypertruck ERX on the books. What would the stock do if they came in with a binding agreement like they are working on finalizing with Detmar and they went ahead and finalized the first 25 of those trucks to roll off the line post product validation, right? Interesting enough. Finally, I will discuss what everybody in the marketplace has absolutely lost their marbles on, and they've lost the actual original association with agility. Uh, agility, uh, Sultan Zarek has not gone away, okay? This is an interesting play here. And if you know anything about agility, Agility is one of the largest shipping and logistics companies in the world. Let me repeat, Mr. Fisher. Agility is one of the largest shipping and transportation companies in the world. And what you're saying is 
this company is not going to buy one Hypertruck ERX. Furthermore, we're in 2021. You're basically saying from 2021 to 2024 that those sales numbers will not be met. I'm here to tell you that those sales projections were meant on grabbing 2% market penetration in an $800 billion a year industry. These companies are buying trucks year in and year out, and they have to do so to comply with the pollution and emissions regulations through the DEF program and the havoc that that has caused on the machinery and the amount of man hours that are wasted on mechanics that have to be put on these trucks to actually keep them rolling down the road is measurable. Okay. Is there no incentive for these shipping companies out there to at least look at alternative solutions? By your hit job, you would basically say that we're going to keep the status quo. Customers who are demanding a cleaner planet, demanding of their of their clients, right? So you have customers that the uh, shipping companies are working for, and you have customers that are demanding that they um, integrate a more carbon neutral footprint in their application. Do you think that they're just going to scoff that off and just say, you know what, we're going to keep the status quo and we're going to keep barreling down the highway, polluting the atmosphere, even though we have governmental pressure, even though we have pressure from our customer base, and we have this little company that's knocking on the door, highly on holdings, which basically is boasting a TCO that's better than diesel over a minimum of seven year total cost of ownership. Do you honestly think that in 2024, they're not going to grab 2%, 1.5%, 1.8%? You have to give me something to go off of. But this hit job took more imagination to write because, again, I think that this individual, this analyst was a small fish, a small worm on a little hook that was thrown into an awful big lake and what ended up happening today was just another indication of stock manipulation at its absolute core. And I would just say at the very least, the SEC needs to look at putting a moratorium on any analyst that is raising their hand to be called upon under the flag of an established financial institution to put a moratorium that that said parent financial institution that represents that analyst cannot buy the stock for 30 days. Very simple. If you truly believe in putting out a hit job that lowers the stock another 25% to, to, to only to get the shares two or three days later, I think that should be legal, illegal. And that's why I call it a hit job. Now, that's 1,550 of the Hypertruck ERXs. Those are known, known orders. What we're basically speculating on is that the Hypertruck ERX Council will fail to garner zero orders into the future. Uh, if, if that ends up happening, I'll eat crow, okay? If this ends up being a product that absolutely nobody wants for the reasons that I've disclosed, the opportunity to satisfy the um, emissions credits in states like California, Maryland, New York, especially New York City, uh, if they cannot garter anything from that market, then these folks don't, they don't need to be in this business because they have promised an awful lot. And I believe that through the product, product validation stage, once these bottom line cost savings are solidified and these customers really start to step forward like Detmar Logistics had done just that and said that the product validation is absolutely there on the diesel side, saving side and on the CNG side where the horsepower is, uh, is, 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 uh, is absolutely worth it. A lot of these CNG trucks cannot enter into the service that they could otherwise enter into because each additional horsepower that's added to uh, the bottom line allows for more payload on specific routes, okay? So 
the e the erx or the ex1 hybrid unit has just been turned out it's a, a month, little over a month old it's available now for uh, product delivery and from all i know hyleon is so busy selling these these units that they have no time to put out any type of updates and with 30 days around the corner to the q3 earnings uh, coming up uh, this may be the best place to disclose this information because it, it's fairly obvious that the market wants to embrace all of the negative news out there and completely dismiss all of the positive news that comes out on the company. And, and that's been proven time and time again. Just three weeks ago, we had a large upgrade on Hylion. Not one thing happened with the stock. The stock went down. And so I find it interesting how it, it's it's okay on one hand to have a subpar, and I do mean like Walmart greeter uh, status here in Mr. Fisher's downgrade of the stock today, come out and offer his uh, extremely surface level opinion that everybody bought into. And I find it interesting how the market gravitates toward that type of information, which is really silly even on the surface, it's it's really silly. Um, it'll boost his status. Absolutely. Now everybody knows who this fruitcake is, and they're not going to expect to see him inside the Walmart uh, greeting line anytime soon. Um, his clout will go up. Negative publicity is, and I'm being pretty scathing to Mr. Fisher tonight, um, and my um, scathing remarks are in retort to the very rationale and the timing behind the downgrade. Where were you at the beginning of the year? Why now? Why after 2021 with all of this positive news, would you come out now and look to save the day with a $5 price target on Hylion? Seems kind of futile, doesn't it? Unless there is a side agenda that it's that's attached to this hit job. So it is just that. It is a hit job. Um, there's been no acknowledgement to the intellectual property. And a lot of the bears will come out and say, you know, Ryan, they're, they're not going to sell product. They're not going to sell product. I, I beg to differ because we have product validation within fleets right now. If you've paid attention to the product validation that's happened within specific businesses over the last uh, couple of years, and especially going back seven years uh, of the of the company as it's unfolded over the years we're at a completely different place now we are right on the precipice of greatness with this company it just makes sense it absolutely makes sense just like the way the toyota prius when they came out with the hybrid version makes sense people love it people love the hybrid unit it's that simple and i find it very very imaginative to imagine that companies are not going to find a use case for this product, especially if the efficiency is there and the product has the ability to pay for itself over time. Wait a minute, Ryan. You mean to tell me that if I buy this product that actually pays for itself over the coming years? Yeah. The total cost of ownership goes down to zero and then it starts to pay the, the company back times X number of units deployed within X number of units within a fleet. Very, very simple mathematics. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, guys. It's really just a numbers game. The investor presentation that outlined the prospective sales numbers, I, I do challenge that a little bit. Do I think that they're going to make those numbers? I, I don't know at this point. Um, the verdict is still out for me because they're pretty lofty. If you see there in 2024, the anticipated sales numbers are about 15,000 and 15,000 of each respective unit. Unless they could win over OEMs, that's not going to happen. Okay. That's not going to happen. And I, I think at, as the company starts to get its product validation, that is really going to be um, the, the critical milestone. And I, I, I hope Gallagher has his big boy pants on and can thread the needle on this deal. Because I tell you what, this has been a, a very, very interesting show up to the dance and, and nobody's there at the party. 
if Hylion cannot integrate into the OEMs like they say that they can. Okay. Now, another thing I'd like to mention here that the bears keep bringing up is the competition. Um, there is none. Okay. I'll just make it very, very simple for you. Um, it, it's all being touted. If it's got Freightliner on it, it's being touted. If it's got Cummins on it, it's being touted. Some of those units are able to make about 250 miles, 350 miles maximum in ideal conditions when tested. Okay. These are the very products, nary of which have sold. These are the very products that are basically stating that there's going to be too much competition in the space for Hylion to make sales down the line. I think if you put a rational twist on this company and really look at it objectively and not lose your marbles in one day of trading, remember the proprietary battery system that charges in eight minutes, okay? There is IP that is registered through the um, many patent holdings that have been carried through on the company's patent book for many, many years. Uh, the head start that Hylion has here entering into and being in product validation for this long with the help of industry. Remember, it's Hylion and industry. They're going about this in the, in the same way, okay? Hand in hand, trying to work a solution here that is the absolute best. And it's going to take when they put this thing into place for those companies to actually come back and say, wow, this is extremely positively received. That's when the dominoes are going to start to fall. And that's going to be the time right there when these analysts who put these hit jobs out, a couple of my favorites, Delaney and now Fisher, I put them on the hit list. I, and really these guys shouldn't be analysts. They shouldn't. I demand that if you're going to do something, be good at it. Okay. Be good at it. And this was nothing more than a hit job. And I, I think it was taking the very one thing that was a, a soft spot and exploiting it in the marketplace. And I, I think in the short term, um, they will have the laugh now. But I think to have the last laugh down the line is when that catalyst is going to flip and we start to get that industry validation that we're looking out before we scale up to mass production of both the uh, um, EX-1 and the ERX, the Hypertruck ERX for these fleets. So guys, if you enjoy the content, you know, and make sure and subscribe, leave your comments. Um, I'm the only one putting out content in the entire world on Hylion right now, and that's including Hylion. So um, I'm going to continue to use my voice on the Independent Investor Channel with our 30,000 subscribers that could. Um, now we're fighting hit job analysts. So that's lovely too. Uh, I'll continue to fight the bears who seemingly have um, all kinds of time with their day to come and put opinion out there on a company that they don't own stock in anymore. Um, let it go. Okay. You're either a bull or a bear. If you're a bear on the company, great. Let's hear your opinion. Share it. Okay. But I find it interesting how a company like an Altria group that kills X number of people every single year, get the nod and it's socially acceptable to put that type of thing out there and it's all okay. And, and you could put Altria in grandma's uh, 80 year old portfolio so she can render the dividend off people dying. But this company right now, it seems like it's ironic to me how many uh, cheerleaders we have against the company right now. When in fact, if this solution is put into place, it'll be better for the planet. It will. It'll be better for the planet. And that's the um, really the interesting irony that I have and the disconnect that I have between these hit jobs that are put out on the company uh, and the actual uh, initiative that this company is looking to see and realize into its future for fleets. So make sure and subscribe, leave your comments, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. <laughs>